not surprising for anyone, but not for me, because I know he's a very strong blitz mm -hmm. player. On a second board, Kyriakin. You already mentioned that, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think I, think I said the very that Artemiev is a very dangerous player. On a second board, it's Kyriakin against Yu Yang Yi. On board three, we can see Vichy Anand. So Anand really wants <laughs> the second medal in this yeah. tournament. I mean, he already won the Rapid Championship, so let's see if he will climb to pedestal in blitz as well. So we will be watching, of course, Carson and Artemiev. Very quickly, this game develops a theoretical line in the Grunfeld. Let's see, let's see how it goes for Vladislav Artemiev. He played with Magnus Carson in Rapid. He has played with Magnus Carson in Rapid, but there he was with the white pieces. The game finished in a draw. Meanwhile, let's mention that in the women's sec uh, section we have the more or less similar situation. We have one leader who is mm -hmm. Nana Zagnidze, we have Pia Kramling who is just half, half a point, point behind. behind, and we have a clear third. It's a Gunina. Yeah, it's Valentina Gunina who has clear third spot. And actually I was checking a little bit, and in women's section it seems about well, it's still three rounds, but the distance, let's say, between place one and like place seven is already quite big. And that means that, that we have a limited pool of players who can theoretically win it. So it's like Zagnidze cannot be moved too far away. Right? Yeah. She might not win the event still, but, but she she's like in top, top five, three. yeah, almost guaranteed top five. Yeah. Unless she loses all three. Yes, she's Georgian as a top three. <laughs> yeah, well. I, th I think, uh, yeah, I don't really see the situation where, where she will lose all three games. I mean, so far mm -hmm. it looks like she's in a very good form. Okay, let's go to Carson and Artemiev. Artemiev pushes his, uh, well, first of all, he played this, well, bit unusual plan, I would say, with bishop d7, queen c8. Uh, pushed his a pawn, and now this rook d5. Somewhat surprising move. Rook has to, to go on h file. Yeah, it might be that rook goes to h5. It might be that, I mean, if the a file is getting open, like a takes, a takes, then rook can go to. And now uh, to so a5. G4. That's interesting. Rook d5, rook h5, g4. And then what? I only I think you have. Five now. Yeah. Rook no, d5 five. back. And so he waits to tempi, but the pawn is on g4. Pawns, as we all know, are not moving back. So some h5 now is the move white has to care about. Castle already has some time advantage, but Artemiev, if necessary, he can play very fast. And he, uh, well, I've just seen him playing the rapid. And he really blunders. He really blunders. He's very inventive in tactics. So Magnus, in order to win this one, and obviously we all know Magnus is looking for a win in every single game. In order to win this one, Magnus will have to show his best. So AB3, AB3 happens. A file so far is for black. White's achievement is the knight on C5, right? And some pressure on C file as well. Oh well, but this time it looks like our team goes a bit too low on the clock. I mean, he's down to one minute, so it's more than one minute difference. And he still can't come up with the move. I think that's, that's what separates those... I mean, like elite players, we say, the, the, the very top, the top 10 players. Yeah. That they don't take a lot of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's one thing. And, and also, I, I want to mention that even in, say, in the kind of simplistic positions, there is still... About, was it a blunder by, by Magnus Carlsen, by the way? Because he went rook a1, and I think that was the moment where uh, Black could have taken on b2 and on c5. I, th I think it was a moment of uh, mutual blindness. Because there was, it was, I'm sure. Rook a2, he went rook a1, and now black could have taken on b2 and then on c5, emerging with extra material. So, well, it's a bad sign for Magnus, I have to say. And I was informed, actually, in one of the games yesterday <coughs> against uh, uh, Varjana Kobian, Magnus has blundered as well. I mean, it was not, uh, his opponent did not see, but, yeah. So, well... A little bit of, of luck involved as well, we can say. Right, so now this knight on c5 is getting exchanged, rook takes, and d5. Right, and remember I mentioned the a file is for black, but now who's going to have the, file, the rook on a file? It's going to be white. 
takes, takes, and he can, I mean, if he wants, he can go to a one. He will probably go to C1 instead. Yeah, because of this uh, pawn on C7. Yeah. Also, there is knight E5. Optically, white's position looks very attractive. He has more time as well. More time, more space. I mean, what else can you ask for? So to jump with the knight to e5 is what about an option. some check? And check, and yeah. G5, knight e5, knight g4 ideas. Uh, well, so so what he does, he does like. He wants to get e file. Uh, he does what I mean, like a mixture of our plans with Katy, right? So he gave a check, but then he went rook a1 and rook d6. So the idea is, if rook goes to a8, black will play rook a6, making sure that rooks are getting exchanged. Now, white can try to improve his knight's position. It's like b4. Okay. He wants to play b5. To get even more space. Right? Yes, and to block this rook to come on a6. I think it's time to play a6. Rook e6. a6. e6 played by Vladislav Artemiev. So now what? Now d5 pawn. Well, it's not clear. Yeah, Magnus decided to take. It wasn't clear to me if, uh, let's say, e takes d5 was such a big threat because uh, why would have e5 in this case and then still would have a majority on the king side. All right, knight to g5, rook a6, and now you probably want to come to d file back, like queen b3 attacking f7, queen e8, and then rook to d1 threatening rook d8. And this is problematic because, yeah, you, you have Maybe no time. Seven. Uh, no. You have no time for h6, I wanted to say. Yeah, so Artemiev decided to go rook d6, but this, of course, creates additional weaknesses in his camp. So queen goes to d5, queen e7, and then b5 stops this knight from moving. b6. Now he might want to move the knight from g5. It's done its job. Queen to a8. Queen c7, not going for a rook endgame. Uh, well, queen's endgame, obviously. King g7, now Magnus has a chance to give a check from a1. Yeah, that's what he does. Queen f6. Uh, another, looks like another achievement. And then b5 pawn is kept. Did if, there was a moment of hesitation. Did Magnus blunder this one on, on e4? Uh, not really. Well, he definitely blundered queen b7. He thought, like, you know, the knight is hanging, my pawn will play queen e8, I will win mm -hmm. the pawn on win the pawn on, on b6. And now it's equalized, more or less. Magnus still continues to play for win, of course, but... Um, h6 is hanging now. Yeah, h6 is, is a threat. h6 is a threat. Uh, black plays h6. Mm, but I don't like how it looks. I mean, the way Magnus moving the pieces, I mean, it, it feels like he's about knight c5. Now, black is prepared for knight b7. Knight f5, knight e6, and queen c1. h6 pawn cannot be protected, it seems. f3, well, it can. Knight g5, queen to c6, and now the exchange, exchange in knight e6. Knight d4. King is running, black still has, oh, well, that's a fantastic new, little nuance. Look. The king, king is trapped. The king cannot escape from h7, yes. So Magnus carefully has to avoid running into double attacks, has to bring the king to b4, and I'm sure he is winning. I'm sure he is winning. Now he's taking the h6 pawn. Comes back with the knight. No, that's completely winning. That's completely winning. Well, he still has to be careful, of course, but... Guess what? Yeah, now knight goes to d4, and it's a victory for Magnus Carlsen, who keeps leading. It's a victory for Magnus yeah, very Carlsen. Important victory. Very, very important victory. So he two more rounds. Two more rounds to go, mm -hmm. and let's remind our viewers that a tie is.